This is a Nissan Skyline R34 GTR, specifically as driven by Paul Walker in the cheesy but classic film Too Fast Too Furious. It's loud, it's flashy, and as some might say with the blue neons that it had in the film, it is positively garish. And this is a Bulova Surveyor Skeleton. It's also loud, flashy, and arguably garish. But here's the thing, I love them both. So, welcome along to the channel. Shall we get into the review? It's at this point that my comparison with the R34 GTR falls completely flat because we're going to talk specs and the R34 GTR in the automotive world when it came out was a spec monster punching way above its weight in terms of performance. I can't say the same about the Bulova, at least not on paper. So let's have a look. We've got a 41mm stainless steel case. We have a skeletonized Miyota 8 series. We've got 30 meters of water resistance. We have a mineral crystal. And I wasn't able to find an exact RRP in US dollars but it's 750 Canadian on the tag. So that's about 550, 560 US dollars, depending on exchange rate fluctuations. Yes, you did hear that right. I promise we'll talk about it later. Anyway, let's look a little bit closer at the watch and let's start with the dial. I can't talk about the dial of this watch without talking about the movement because of the skeletonization. So this is a Miyota 8N24, which is, a pretty heavily skeletonized version of a Miyota 8 series. I think it's better than the equivalent Seiko movements uh, in terms of skeletonization at this price point. But of course the Miyota 8 series is not a particular favorite amongst most enthusiasts. But Bulova have done a good job here. The finishing across the movement is it's, it's clean, but it's industrial. It's not going to win any awards and it's not gonna certainly rival any of the Swiss watches. That being said, the industrial aesthetic it kind of suits this watch. Bulova's overlay is an interesting one. There's a few different layers to it. You have the first layer, which is a dark gunmetal with a machine applied perlage finish on it. That has automatic and 21 joules written, which follows the curvature of the balance spring. And then there is a couple of brushed plates, which are screwed down, presumably to dress it up a little bit. The first one, which highlights the jewel on the balance spring, and the second one curves around the mainspring barrel. Moving more to the outside of the dial, the next level up is a sort of blue anodized finish, and this is where you'll see these triangular polished indices, and they are really well polished. There's exceptional finishing on them, and they play with the light really nicely. And this is one of the best things that Bulova has done, is creating the light play with the indices on this dial. It does say Bulova. It looks a little bit awkward where they've put the branding for it. I'm not sure if I like it or don't like it. I haven't really decided yet if it particularly works. But anyway, it's there between the three o'clock and the four o'clock marker. Above this layer, you have a polished ring, which is a really small, but really important addition to the finish of this watch. And then above that, you have the rehort or chapter ring in a similar but not perfect match of blue. Doesn't have the anodized finish, it's more of a matte, and that has your minute markers there. The hands on this one, very simple handset. You have a white seconds hand without any loom, and then your hour and minute hands, relatively simple, sword shaped, but not particularly big considering the size of the watch. In terms of case finishing, there's quite a lot going on here. So the bezel on this is a high polish, and then stepping down from the bezel, you have a brushed surface, which is directly facing you when you look at the watch head on. Then you've got polished chamfers from there in each of the four corners, and then that leads down to vertical brushing on both sides of the case. And of course, your crown there, which you'll see with the Bulova tuning fork logo on the right hand side. Onto the case back and you have a screw down case back with a mineral crystal viewing window to look into the skeletonized movement. A few basic specifications stamped 
on the case back and then polished surfaces surrounding that. The bracelet on this is really nice. It is a H-link style with brushed outer links and then polished rectangular center links. It's a butterfly clasp on this one and thankfully Bulliver do include a half link. So I was able to get a really good fit with this. On wrist, you really need to pay attention to that 48 millimeter lug to lug, especially because the case is relatively flat and it's not downturned. And whilst female end links are present on the bracelet, I think my 17 and a half centimeter wrist is about the limit for pulling that off. Any smaller and the case is probably gonna hang over the sides of your wrist. Looking at the loom, is it spectacular? No, I don't really mind too much with this style of watch just to be able to read the time at night and perhaps when I wake up in the morning in a dark room, then I'm happy enough and I can achieve that with what's on the hour and the minute hand. How are we on the time grapher? Well, plus 10, plus 11 seconds, zero beat error is fantastic and a very healthy amplitude here. From your 8 series that I'm assuming is unregulated, I'm pretty happy. The spec list and the price looks like a mismatch. Now I can forgive the choice of movement because this is a skeleton watch and to my knowledge there is no 9 series Miyota skeleton so you have to go with the A10 movement and obviously Bulliver being part of the citizen group they're going to pick something in-house they're not going to look elsewhere so let's leave the Miyota argument to one side. At 550 US dollars for a watch like this you expect at the very least sapphire crystal on the front even if you were going to go with mineral on the screw down case back. And I don't see any reason why they couldn't have put a screw down crown on this and just given it 100 meters of water resistance so it would feel more like an everyday sports watch, which most people would really appreciate, I think. Skeletonized watches are never the easiest to tell the time on, but I think a bigger hour and minute hand, a little bit wider and a little bit chunkier on something of this size would firstly match a little bit better and it would be easier to read. And finally, the second hand is too stubby. It just needs to be a little bit longer just to be in line with the chapter ring and with those minute markers. It really annoys me when companies put second hands on that are too short and it's amazing how many watches the second hand doesn't touch towards the edge of the dial. So obviously I didn't spend my own money on a watch just to roast it for the sake of YouTube. There must have been some redeeming features and there are some things that I love about this watch and I don't regret my purchase at all. First of all, I think it's a really interesting watch to look at. The light play between the dial skeletonized movement and the indices is really really fun and enjoyable when it's on the wrist. It draws attention and intrigue and I find it such a fun watch to wear and spend time with. And whilst sometimes skeletonization does feel a little bit tacky, I do enjoy seeing the beating heart of the watch. And for me, it's a bit of a guilty pleasure. In a world full of black dials, gray dials, and white dials, it's just fun to have different watches. Second, and perhaps the biggest surprise to me, was the bracelet on this is really, really nice. It's very well finished. All of the edges are smooth. Even where you've got straight cut, 90 degree angles, it's been really nicely deburred. It feels smooth in the hand and it's very comfortable. And the addition of that half link and the links themselves not being particularly long means that I think most people would be able to get a comfortable fit despite the fact that it's a butterfly clasp. Finally, I love the case shape. I think this sort of retro futuristic shape really captivates me and again it's unlike anything else in my watch box. With the light play, the interesting dial, the fun of the skeletonization, I really really enjoy wearing this piece despite the fact that on paper it's an absolute shocker. So let's get to a conclusion. Yes or no, this is your last chance, no beating around the bush. So what's my closing thoughts on the Bulliver Surveyor Skeleton? Well, I think it's an awesome skeletonized watch. I think it looks fantastic, it catches the eye. If you don't feel the same way when you look at it, then I don't think I would be able to recommend it to you. Because 
It's not the perfect everyday sports watch. Because of that 30 meters water resistance, you can't take it swimming. And for those who really value the spec sheet, the movement, I think that lack of sapphire crystal and that Miyota 8 series, even with a heavy discount, you probably still wouldn't justify it. But if you like the looks as much as I do, make sure you get a big discount on it. Typically, Bulliver and Citizen, they always seem to be running somewhere between 20 and 35%, and sometimes you can ask for a little bit more as well. So do make sure you get it at a heavy discount if you purchase the watch. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this watch and about Bulliver in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed already, it means a huge amount to me as a small channel for all of my subscribers. And if you hit that bell icon, you'll get a notification each time that I upload a new video. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.